Hello everyone and welcome back to Foolish Mortals the demo. And we will be continuing where we left off, which was basically going through our uh, It was a small inventory. leather pouch with a drawstring used for voodoo spells. Currently it held black feathers, gunpowder, and rum. Alright. Manuscript. Ooh. Five ingredients. Place inside, tie it closed, and then unseal. Within the focus... Uh, what may hide, the spell will soon reveal. Shock. And coffin nails. Right. Those are the ones that I need. Alright. An empty bottle. It was an empty soda bottle that I'd found on the beach. Uh, the it was the taxidermy fish, fish I'd taken from the riverboat, with a ripped seam opening up to the stuffing inside of it. Okay. It was the taxidermy okay. fish I'd taken from... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Captain's license. John Bennett. I guess that's him? I don't know. Don't think there's anything else here that I can look at. I doubted there was anything useful in the bayou. I wasn't going to risk having my arm bitten off by an alligator to confirm <laughs> those doubts. <laughs> really? Why not? Doesn't that sound like fun? Alright. Okay, so there's three places I can go. Let's start furthest away. Uh. Framed by trees and lit by moonlight, Belmore Manor stood imposingly in the still night air. Even without lights on, it felt like something inside the house was calling me. Or warning me. Ah, uh, considering the history, I would say that it's probably the latter. I wasn't going to wade into the pond. Doesn't really like going into water, does he? Might as well check the man route. Right? I scanned the house for a way in. Perhaps an unlocked door or window. But my search was without luck. Yes, that's the only thing that's here. Yeah, so let's <coughs> Let's leave. What's this place? Oh, hello. Carpenter? I guess we can get coffin nails here. Hello, sir. The tin was empty. I didn't need to do anything with the stove, and would have probably burnt my hands if I tried. That could warm your hands. The coffin lid had been nailed down securely. I wasn't going to be able to open it. Oh, not really what I had in mind. Hello. Ah, concern it! Don't sneak up on people like that. You frighten the dying daylights out of me. Snake! He looked at me like he'd seen a ghost. I Sorry. stood there for a while! I thought you were those pesky kids again. Kids don't seem like a reason to be scared. <laughs> They're little terrors. I'm so sure they're going to give me a heart attack. Last week they showed up with a doctor's note they forged. Saying a man I'd buried that day was just a very deep sleeper. <laughs> Seven hours I was out here digging him up, at my age! And was he sleeping? Dead as a dodo. Just like those kids will be if I get my hands on them. That's quite a practical joke, eh? My name's Murphy McCallan. I've just arrived on the My island. My name's Murphy McCallan. I've just arrived on the island. Well, welcome, Mr. Murphy. Oh, I'm thank Edgar you. Kettle, grave digger, undertaker, coffin Hello, maker, Kettle. and anything else that needs doing to keep this cemetery running. I'm looking for the treasure of Belmore Manor. 
Another treasure hunter. Yep. Well, let me tell you something, young man. Don't even think about digging <laughs> up my graveyard. There's no treasure buried here, and I'm already busy enough filling in the holes that are meant to be here. <laughs> Have you ever accidentally buried someone who is still alive? Not that I know of. When you think about it, how would I know? Shouts mm -hmm. for help? Desperate shaking of the coffin? Look, I haven't sealed anyone up who was chatting away with me, let's put it that way. I, I guess that's uh, life, reassuring to know. Take shortcuts sometimes, don't they? <laughs> I deserve some rest in peace, too. Has the cemetery been here long? This cemetery is the whole reason Devil's Rock is populated. <laughs> okay. Back when the mainland was first settled, they used to ship oh. out the bodies of undesirables to be buried here. The criminals and paupers. St. <laughs> Juniper's course. church up on the hill was one of the first structures here, along with the fort. So that's what this place became. A cemetery <laughs> island. <laughs> A place where only Beelzebub oh. himself would take the bodies that were in Yeah, I guess the, it's a fitting name then. The Devil's Rock. Creepy. So there are caves and tunnels on the island? Oh yes, all over it. Some natural, some man-made. No one knows where they really are though. I'm quite surprised I've yet to dig myself down into one. <laughs> they say there's one that runs from the church to the crypt just down the path. An old escape route. But I've never been in there. Hmm. Yeah. Do you know anything about the disappearances? The Do you know anything about the disappearance at Belmore Manor? I think it's important to leave the dead to rest <clears throat> in peace. But what if they're not in peace? Well, I think there's more to that story than meets the eye. You know the three brothers yes, went missing, I do. right? Well, if you ask me, I think Abigail Belmore was behind it. Certainly she was seems plausible. To a sailor. But nobody like her would go for a commoner. She might have loved him. She could have loved somebody with a big bank account, too. I think she must have been using him, pretending to love him, so he'd do her dirty work for her, bumping off her brothers. Mm -hmm. Then afterwards, she drops him, and goes to marry the officer of the company. Fiendish. Those are some pretty serious allegations. Seems plausible, though. That's all. I don't have any evidence. But when you work with cadavers, you kinda get a sixth sense about things. People killed in mysterious circumstances. Like you can tell when someone's sneaking <laughs> behind you. You actually seem to have trouble with that. Wise guy. Hmm. I want to keep going with this. What sure. do you think was behind the disappearance? Well, the sailor must have found out he was being manipulated, mustn't he? Done something to get his revenge. But to make the whole wedding party disappear? What do you think the sailor How did to do get that? his revenge? How? Nobody knows. But in his contracts to the Caribbean, he could have come across something fiendish. All we know is that everyone in that house disappeared. And to tell you the truth, I'm quite relieved they did. Why's that? Because if they had not disappeared, it would be this old fool who'd have had to bury them. Saved me a good amount of work. <laughs> okay. Do you have any spare coffin nails? Have you got any spare coffin nails? No, I don't got any to spare. I have to buy these out of my own pocket. Do you know how much the parish gives me per burial nowadays? A pittance. The roof's leaking, my table's broken, I've used floorboards to build some of the coffins. Damn. Take my advice. Don't go into this line of work. <laughs> I'm telling you. I don't think he has plans for that. Die in business. Funny. 
Very funny. Do you not find working in a graveyard a little eerie? Why would it be? <coughs> I don't know. Ghosts, maybe? I don't like to think about ghosts. <coughs> Why not? Because they'd be bad for business. I have my work cut out here with the dead as it is. Imagine if they came back asking for a refund. Sorry about the coughing, people. It's a tickling in my throat. What are you working on? This is just a pauper's coffin the parish is funding. Lock him in lumber, leave him to slumber. That's what I call it. No frills. This will end up five feet under by the end of the night. I thought it was supposed to be yeah. six feet. Exactly. You're not the one doing the digging. Five feet means I get a tea break. <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. Why are you out here working so late? The funerals take place in the morning, and I prefer to be tucked up in my bed. I don't like those early funerals. <laughs> I'm not a morning person. Another, uh... Death joke. Do you think I could fit inside the coffin? Probably not. The gentleman inside might make it a bit of a squeeze. <laughs> you mean there's a dead guy inside there? There better be. I can't afford to be burying empty coffins. Creepy. Story of my life. Did the coffin just move? Don't even joke about that. I best be running along. Don't drop dead. I don't want anything else added to my to-do list. I mean, don't plan on it. I don't think he'll appreciate that, but okay. I'm sure I can find some use for that. I scanned the headstones for anything of note, but didn't know what I was searching for. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to find something if you don't know what you're looking for. Uh, that's everything. Can't do anything with him. Uh. With the jack removed, the table rocked freely. Uh. <coughs> Hello, Edgar. <laughs> Really? I best be running along. Goodbye. Okay. Yes, I need something else then. Let's check out the first place. You know, Walking the third. into the poor town of Dead Nettle, I could sense its history in every stone, brick, and plank. Echoes of merchant ships loading and unloading all manner of cargo from expeditions throughout the Caribbean golden treasure that may still lie hidden on the island. Okay, can talk to the sailor, or the fisherman, and check the scale, notice board. Can go in that door. There's a passageway, a poster. And the archway. Okay, is that it? And check the wreck. Okay. Well, let's check the scale first. If I was going to make use of that, I needed a fish to weigh. I hung the fish on the scales. Nice try, but it's going to need to be heavier than that to be my record. I uh, don't have anything heavy. Are the fish biting? Well, not so well today to tell the truth. They must have been spooked by something. <laughs> but you should have seen them yesterday. I was having to fight them off the rod. The name's Ned Kipps, by the way. Just Kipps to my friends. I'm Murphy McCallum. Nice to meet you, Mac. What are you doing on this old rock anyway? 
I haven't seen you around before. You're on vacation? I guess you could say that. Then you got worse judgment than an arm wrestler squaring up to a Kraken. <laughs> Hope you don't regret it. Me too. What's that book you're reading? The Louisiana Book of Records. That's There's this so fish dry. called a pinkoza that swims around these parts. Delicious barbecue. And you're looking at the fella that's caught the heaviest pinkoza ever weighed at the dead nettle docks. Okay. Now I'm looking to see if it's a state record. Maybe even national. Or a world record. That's some achievement. Oh, it was. Got my <laughs> photograph on the front page of the newspaper and everything. Nice. What do you do with the fish you catch? A couple I save for myself, and the rest I sell to the captain's club. They fancy them up with lemon lobster, slawfish, something or another. Fools. <laughs> Everyone knows the best way to cook them is to barbecue them. But then again, I haven't eaten in that place my whole life. Why not? I don't have a captain's license, so they won't let me in. <laughs> don't you have a fishing boat? Now, I used to. The Petit Pache. But they don't count it if it doesn't have a crew. What happened to it? <laughs> That's it across the harbor with this bow sticking out the water. It uh -huh. was the strangest thing. There I was, fishing just out in the bay. When a sea serpent comes out the water, wraps itself around the boat. Well, I was going to be a goner. Okay. Jab my fishing pole right in its beady eye. Throttled the motor and managed to make it back to show just as the hull went under. It's lucky I made it out alive. That's a pretty tall tale. I wouldn't believe it myself if I hadn't seen it with my <laughs> own eyes. It was clear that Ned had a penchant for fanciful stories. Yeah. He told them with such vigor, I think he'd convinced himself they were true. I mean, he is a fisherman. How do you catch a pinkosa fish? Oh, it's not for the faint of heart, Murphy. Decades of practice, hours of patience. <laughs> I tell you this, I doubt you'll ever beat my record. Don't worry, I'm no fisherman. You know? I could write my own book, put my techniques in that, or an autobiography. Sea circuits, cracking, sunken treasure. I just need a snappy title. Something <laughs> exciting, something dangerous, something that'll get the book picked up off a shelf. I know. Fish and kips. That'll work. <laughs> yeah, snappy. I'm looking for the lost treasure of Belmore Manor. Well, I've heard a tall tale or two. But even I'm not spending my time looking for that. It's been lost for 30 <laughs> years now. Lost means it's still ready for finding. I've yeah. traveled every waterway on this island. One way of and I haven't it. even seen a hint of it. It could be at the bottom of the ocean for all <clears> I know. And I've found a few treasures in my time. French treasure, British treasure, pirate treasure, but no Belmo treasure. Do you <laughs> still have those treasures? Well, I had to hide them again. Give someone else a chance to find them. I wouldn't believe it myself if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> What do you know about the disappearance at Belmore Manor? Now there's a tale to tell. You know about Miss Belmore? The bride engaged oh, yeah. to the sailor? I heard she was having an affair. Getting up to no good with this fellow called John Rapper. He was one of the Belmore Company's higher ups. Anyway, sailor catches wind of it and tricks Rackham into giving the lady a gift. That's what caused everything to go topsy-turvy. What was the gift? Call me a liar. But there are places in the Caribbean that trade things more elusive than gold. <laughs> Ungodly things. Is that what you think caused the mm -hmm. disappearance? What else could it be? I mean, at the moment, I don't know any better. Could be that. What can you tell me about Miss Belmore? Ah, Abigail. More beautiful than a mermaid. And twice as fishy. Seems like <laughs> such a nice girl, too. Until the affair. It seems so unlike her. What Maybe about the was. sailor? Don't know much about him. Never met the fella. I never got involved in the dock work, to tell the truth. Always preferred to sit with my fishing pole and fend for myself. We all figured that Abigail being in love with him and everything, he must have been fine folk. I think we were wrong. Poor Rackham, though. He was wronger still. I'm a business guy myself. Get the product, sell the product. Nothing wrong with bringing home the bacon. But he brought back trouble, and he paid the price. I suppose it was a mistake for him to get involved with Abigail. It's risky mixing business and pleasure. So they say. Catch you later, Ned. See you around, Matt. Alright. Wait, can I do something with that? Good evening, Kips. Hello again, Mac. Catch I you later, Ned. Um, See you around, Mac. Left in this, I'm guessing.
that's for weighing fish. No one's going to beat my record. That's the only thing I can do there. Okay, well. Let's check out his boat. What's left of it. Not gonna do much good there. There was no way to get out to the wreck. And from how decayed it looked, no reason to get out to the wreck either. Alright, let's check it out. Well, gotta check everything. The latest newspaper contained a photograph of the fisherman on the docks, mm -hmm. with a headline declaring he'd just broken the island's heaviest catch record. Nothing else was of interest. So, what's this place? Ah, newspaper. You! Stop right there! What's your name? Um, Murphy McAllen. I haven't seen you before. What's your mm. business? I'm just visiting. Why do you need to know? Because your business is my business, and my business is news. I'm okay. Evelyn Stoker, editor of the Juniper Parish Gazette. No misdeed left unshared, no drama left unmonetized. Come on, work with me here, Murphy. I need something juicy. Committed any crimes? Uncovered any affairs? Any deep, personal secrets to reveal? The honest-to-God truth. No. I need a good story. I can't always let something minor like the truth stand in the way of that. Okay. Ah, that's Don't old. even think about touching that machine. That is an old printing press. I wasn't going to get ink all over my hands. Nothing of interest on the walls. Right. Hey, you can't come back here. Sorry. Guess she's gonna there say was no that. way I was going to get past the newspaper editor <laughs> to get it. Besides, I didn't know how to operate it. Is it camera? How hard can it be to operate? Yes. Hi. What are you working on? Listen to this. An innocent victim's domesticated canine has been suddenly and mysteriously ripped away from them by fate. Its location and intentions are unknown. Wait, are you talking about a lost dog? Yeah. Technically, it's not lost anymore. It was found shortly before I got to the house. But still, the story must be written. Okay. I have a headline suggestion. Lost dog, not lost. I have a personal suggestion. But out. Oh, well, she is definitely very intense. Don't you have more interesting stories to write about? The crack tops this island calls a population wouldn't know something interesting if they paid for it. Which they hardly do. Believe me, <laughs> I've tried to get juicier stories. Scouring the island, doorstop interviews, <clears throat> hiding beneath windows. Oh. Okay. You eavesdrop on people through their windows? It's called investigative reporting. Uh, no, it's not. That is not investiga <laughs> investigative reporting. It's not. I'm doing some research on the treasure of Belmore Manor. Leave it. That's my advice. <laughs> There's no story in it. No story? Care. Not that anyone would believe. And I've got advertisers breathing down my neck. What's your theory on Belmore Manor? This might sound far-fetched. But I think it was hypnotism. Uh, okay. All the puzzle pieces make sense. Who was hypnotized? Abigail, by that strange sailor she was going to marry. This uh. newspaper had been publishing a bunch of stories about spooky goings on across the island. We even had tip offs of black I mean, magic I, if anyone would manner, hypnotize any Abigail, I would say that I would Who be the officer. Well, we weren't told for sure, but it makes sense, doesn't it? The sailor! Why else would someone as powerful as Abigail want to marry a lowly manual worker like Hello? him? Come the night of the wedding, and she wised up. Married John Rackham, the company's first officer. Much more on her social <laughs> standing, and a responsible choice for the company. What do you think caused everyone to disappear? <clears throat> The last revenge so of the far, sorcery. Her theory me seems less plausible than the other journalism. two. 
I'd be laughed out of the industry. What's in those filing cabinets? Past issues of the newspaper, starting right back in 1864. Damn. Of course, things were a lot more interesting when Dead Nettle was thriving as a port town. Comings and goings oh, of people, course. ships, and mm. cargo. Makes Lots sense. to report on back then. More than the dregs I have to dress up now. Can I take a look in the filing cabinets? Sorry, McAllen. Employees only. And we're a one-woman operation here these days. The paper doesn't bring in enough money to take people on. Hmm. Why did the ship stop coming to Dead Nettle? The Belmore Trading Company was the heartbeat of this island. Okay. After the disappearance, there was no one left to run the company, and it all got sold off. When that folded, so did pretty much everything else. Not surprising. Uh, do you have any back issues? Do you have any back issues featuring the Belmore Manor wedding? We don't, I'm afraid. Most of oh. the paper's directors were at the wedding and disappeared along with everyone else. <laughs> okay. The newspaper had to shut up shop for weeks while it was restaffed. This was back when the Gazette wasn't run by just one person. Obviously. Would you take my photograph? Do you know how much the chemicals cost <laughs> to develop those photographs? I'm on a limited budget here, McAllen. Unless you've done something notable, you're not getting into print. What constitutes something notable for the newspaper? Frankly, our standards are pretty low these days. Yep. Yesterday, I photographed Ned Kipps, the fisherman that hangs around the pier, for catching a fish. Is that a surprising turn of events for a fisherman? <laughs> it broke the island weight record. The pen causes a fish that's been caught around the island since it was settled. The locals say it tastes good. I'd rather chew on raw cotton. Okay. I think I better be going. Keep your eyes out for a story, McAllen. There are secrets on the island, and it's my job to sell advertisements next to them. That's one way of looking at it. Anyway, that's it for this episode. We'll continue this and try to figure out what's going on, I guess. In the next one. Bye! Please consider liking the video, and if you would like to see more content moving forward, then subscribe to the channel, and click that notification bell to be notified about my latest videos.